Another amen. Thank 
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. He has been so good to me. Amen. Yes. Telling you, Amen. I had this message Sunday, but you know, uh, God had other plans Sunday. Amen. Yes, and, He did. Uh, tell you, uh, seems like it's a repeat of a lot of what was said Sunday night. Amen. But you know. Uh, God wants us to be fearless. Amen? Yes, He does. Amen? He wants us to realize, amen, that He has our back. Amen? He's got our front, our side, left and right. Amen? He got mm -hmm. one behind us. Amen? He watches over us, Sister Rita. Amen? And he, he, he takes care of us very well. Amen? What He needs is our obedience. Amen? He needs us to recognize who He is in our life, amen, and to realize, amen, that, amen, that we don't need help, amen. Amen. We just need our Savior, amen. Yep. I'm telling you, amen, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. If you would, you can turn with me to Psalms 37 and mark your spot there and flip over to uh, Isaiah 41 and 10, amen. Uh, ministered a little off of this one scripture here a, a, a week or so ago. I don't remember how long it's been, but uh, I do remember <coughs> that God had laid this on my heart and it was a different message, amen, and then all of a sudden he put me right back on it again, amen. And I'm like, okay, God. And I know God has been doing stuff in my walk, amen, and yeah. in my life. Isaiah 40. 1 and 10. In Psalms chapter 37. Amen. But I'll tell you, amen, that God has been showing me that no matter what things look like or how things seem to be, He's there to take care of us. Amen. amen. And uh, I'll tell you, he, he did work a miracle in my life this past month. Amen. It's unexplainable. I don't know how to explain it. All I can say, it had to be gone. Amen? Amen. Brother. Because I never go a week and a half, two weeks without work through the summer. And here I was a week and a half, two weeks without work. And Bill still got paid. Amen. We had just took vacation with a busted broke. Amen. It just seemed like I thought, oh, my God, I've messed up, you know. And I said, God, you got to help me. What's going on? I don't understand. What have I done wrong? You know, well, the first thing you begin to think, amen, yes, you do. is you've done something wrong because, you know, I believe in God's Word and it says you'll prosper as your soul prospers. And I began to think, God, what am I doing? Am I doing something wrong? What, what's going on? And I believe God just wanted me to see that no matter how things look, he was still capable and able to take care of us. Amen. amen. And he will, amen. <clears throat> but fear came upon me during that time, amen. I had a little worry, amen. I, I fretted a little bit, amen. I, 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 I kind of got a little mully grub. I kind of felt a little like I was getting depressed, amen. Come on. I thought, my goodness, what's going on? God, I know you're real and you're, you're going to take care of me, but God, I just don't see how... I'm going to make it this month. Amen. That's the way I feel. But every time I turn around, God was pouring a blessing out on me. I mean, wasn't working, but something great was happening, Rita. Amen. God was showing up right on time. Amen. I'm telling you, amen. Yeah. And, and we got through it, amen. And I'm telling you, I, I, I was biting nails, it seemed like, amen. But I can tell you something, amen. Maybe a lot of this that I went through was why God gave me these scriptures, amen, but he gave me a message, amen, that I want to share with you tonight, amen. Yeah. So as you look with me at Isaiah 41 and 10, amen, it says, Fear thou not, <clears throat> for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee, with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen? amen. I'm telling you, amen, that, that one scripture right there says it all. Amen. amen. God will not let you down. Amen? 
I'm telling you, he's on your side. Amen. If you're walking with him and you're standing up under his cover, amen, I'm telling you, you don't have a thing to worry about. The thing that you need to worry about is whether or not you're pleasing him. Amen. Yeah. You don't have to worry about the things of this world. Amen. God's got all the things in this world. He owns everything. Amen. There's nothing that you can see with your physical eyes that don't belong to him. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. That means your bank account, he owns it. Amen. Mm. It's not yours, it's actually his. Amen. I said, God, I just don't understand how I'm going to make it. I said, I got this. <laughs> mm. You just got to believe it. Amen. Amen. Do you realize that tonight, amen, what we got to do is start believing. Yes. Amen. And trusting God for his word is true. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, read, I believe I wrote a little bit. Amen. I needed it, amen, and I didn't realize, amen, that I had counted things so, you know, I just overlooked them, man, and didn't realize what all God was actually doing and how he was making things happen. It wasn't me doing it, it was him, amen. Mm -hmm. And we need to realize tonight that God's here to take care of us. He's here to lead God and direct us, and what we've got to learn to do is become obedient, amen. We've got to lessen ourselves so that he can greater himself in our life, and as we begin to do these things, I'm telling you, God will show up and he'll show out, amen. Amen. So I had, had a week or two of trying to learn not to worry, amen. 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 Had a week or two of learning to trust God a little more and realize that I didn't have to worry. God was going to take care of it, amen. No matter how it looked, God would just set me up mm -hmm. for a miracle, Brother Hines. Amen. He would just set me up for a blessing. Amen. And and what I had to do is go through the test. Amen. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all had tests before? God put you through some things at times, Diane, yep. that you just didn't know what was going to happen. You, you wondered how you was going to make ends meet. You didn't understand why things were the way that they were. It just seemed like everything was upside down and just wasn't nothing really working out. But you still love God anyways. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you learned to praise Him no matter what. Amen. I'll tell you, amen, I remember laying in the bed. Saying, God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you're going to do it because I can't, amen. Mm -hmm. God, you're going to have to make this happen, you know. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, amen, as soon as I begin to praise him and lift him up, Sandra said this the other morning, or other night, amen, about praising God on Christian, amen. Mm -hmm. We need to learn to praise God anyways, amen. And realize that God's got everything in his hands, amen. He's in control, amen. He's not out of control. He knows what he's doing, amen. Yep. Sometimes we get placed in the potter's hands, amen? And he begins to shape and mold us, and it don't feel too good sometimes. Right. Amen? Because sometimes there's a little stone, or, or there's, a, there's a place that he's got to work real good because there's a crack there, amen? And a little of that anointing has been seeping out, amen? And God wants to close that crack up in your life, amen? He wants to reform you, amen? and transform you into that new creature that he's called you to be. Amen? amen. Sometimes we get a little slowful in our serving. Amen? <coughs> and we need God to work upon us again. Amen? amen? We find that when we begin to fear God, the Bible says it's the beginning of wisdom when you begin to fear the Lord. Amen? amen. Listen to Psalm 37, verse 1. It says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, be it, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Did you know that sometimes we have people that's, how would you say this? Uh, they're thrill seekers. Hey man, they get a thrill. They get, they kind of get excited. About getting scared, amen. Mm -hmm. Adrenaline rushes. Uh, yeah, there you go, brother George. Yep. What it is, it's a, it's a a motivator to them, amen. Yep. Amen. Here we got Halloween coming up. One, of, I guess, one of the worst uh, holidays that that I know of, amen. That we commune with, amen. amen. Because it seems like everybody participates, yeah. even the Christians. I tell you, I, we don't put up a pumpkin. We don't. We don't put up uh, 
decorations. I don't have nothing to do that the devil's got to do with. Amen. Amen. But, Amen. You know, it, it didn't start off that way from my understanding, from what I've read and, and, and studied on it. What It didn't start off that way, but the devil has taken it and he's converted it, amen, into his day, amen. And that's what the devil will do with us, amen, if we keep letting fear enter into our lives, amen. He'll convert us, amen, mm -hmm. from being the Christian that God wants us to be into being a puppet that he can use, amen. I don't want to be converted that way. I don't want to find myself compromised with the world and with the enemy. Amen. Yeah. I want to find myself being steadfast and unmovable, fearing for that which God thinks, not what the devil or the world thinks. Amen. But looking unto God, amen, for all the answers. Amen. But you find thrill seekers. Amen. In this world. Amen. You know, I don't really want to minister <coughs> on that as much as I do about putting God first in your life. And realizing that God is in control, amen, and yep. realizing, amen, that we need to fear God more so than man, amen. Yep. Some of us find ourselves not worshiping God like we should just because our neighbor is not doing nothing. Yep, Have much. you ever got around somebody, and I'm just going to throw this out for good measure, amen. You ever got around somebody that you know that they was Baptist? All the time. And, and, you invite them to church, and then when they come to church, you say, Oh, I hope so and so don't speak out to them tonight. Oh, so, so, so. I invited them here, and I don't know what they think. Have you ever done that? I know of people that said things like that. Come to me and say, Brother Jack, you think everything go good tonight? I asked so and so, and I know they go to a Baptist church. And you think so and so speak in tongues tonight? I hope they don't. I'm thinking, well, I sure hope they do. I hope God just gets out. Know. My I'll answer to them is, I will not tell you. I said, if God moves. Maybe that Baptist will. You never know. Happen. Amen. That's what I told them. Amen. If God moves, there ain't no telling what might happen. Amen. Well, I sure hope they don't speak out tonight and tell them, because I ain't invited them. I want them to come back. I said, well, I'd hate to think they wouldn't come back because somebody spoke in tongues. Amen. If the Holy Ghost is moving, we need to let the Holy Ghost have its way. Amen. Who's more important, that person or God? Amen. Amen. God wants them here. They'll stay. Amen. That's the way I look at it. Amen. I've heard people say, well, you know, if you don't watch out and you keep preaching too long, ain't nobody going to come. <laughs> you try to cut a message down, God will give you one five pages long. You can't cut that thing down. He won't let you hunt. I've dealt with that before. Now these are things that people in the church come up with, amen, to me, amen, and say to me, and I'm like, well, I just can't help it if God wants me to preach that way. That's just the way it's going to be. Well, you're going to run people off. I had people tell me that. I remember my old pastor, Brother George, amen, <clears throat> when I was living in Alabama, amen. I remember my old pastor and his wife would watch the clock on. She did, they didn't have a clock in the sanctuary. She had a watch on her arm, amen. And she'd watch that watch. And when it got about 15 till 12, she'd be doing this and this and this, looking at Brother Roger, making all kinds of hand motions towards him, trying to tell him to cut it off. <laughs> amen. That's all she was doing. Uh, and Sister LaVarne Garrison, which was a Pentecostal, uh, assistant pastor's wife, she'd say, would you look at her? I wish she'd just quit that. <laughs> She's going <laughs> to quit the Spirit of God in this place. <laughs> <laughs> She's a little fireball, amen? When she got up and moved, you better believe the Holy Ghost was going to be moving through the service, amen? Mm -hmm. and, and Brother Milton was the same way. He was a quiet man. Didn't seem much, but they was Pentecostal. They was on fire for Jesus. They was devil. I'm devil stomping preacher I've ever met in my life. Amen. Come on. They fought demonic warfare the whole time I was there. And I'm telling you, amen, that Brother Milton wouldn't say nothing without thinking about it first. He was just that way. 
But when he spoke, people listened. Brother Rogers has had him as his assistant pastor, and I know why, because Brother Milton was a wise man of God. And you know what? We've got to learn to walk wise. Yeah. We can't let the devil distract us and cause us to fret because of somebody else being in the service. And, and, and we can't let people keep us from worshiping God the way God wants us to worship Him. Amen? Amen. You know, God may want you to jump out in the aisles and dance. Amen? I've been in churches where people just danced all over the house. Amen? I, I remember going to a church down there in Florida. Amen? And there was a lady, and she had these little things, something like this, but they were smaller than this, and she put them on her fingers. They had a little, little band around, and they called them clappers, man. She'd take them clappers, and when the Holy Ghost get a hold of her, she'd go dancing all through the house. Them things. Buddy, I'd like to see somebody try to tell her to sit down and be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> she was in the spirit, Brother George. Amen. And you know, we'll quit worrying about what everybody else thinks. And worry about what God thinks. We might have some people acting a little crazy around here. Amen. And nothing wrong with being crazy for Jesus. There's something wrong with not being crazy for Jesus. I tell you, I'd much rather be a Jesus fanatic than not have Jesus at all. Amen. I don't want to go to a dead church. Amen. I want it to be alive. I don't care if people talk about us. Amen. All I want to do is serve Him and magnify Him and lift Him up. If they don't like me, they don't have to. Amen. All I care about is if I'm pleasing Him. You know what? That's what we need to be. We need to be that way, Sister Diane. Don't worry about what everybody else thinks. Amen. Just grow boldness. Amen. And I'm not telling you to be arrogant or or being boastful and acting like you're something that you're not. I'm saying worship God however God wants you to worship Him. Yeah. And don't worry about whether there's a Baptist in the congregation that night or not. Amen. Amen. We need to worship God from our heart. Amen. Yeah. Oh, there have been times I've been at, at work, amen, and I've been working all of a sudden I just start singing, I don't care who's around me. <laughs> it don't matter, does it, does it? Amen. We'll, we'll be sitting there and going through something. I just stop. We'll start praying. Amen. Today we walked out and this, this minister that we're working for, amen, he, his phone goes, he said, oh, it's time to pray. And he said, he said, what? He said, and the guy standing next to him had already been around him a few days and knew that that's what it was. And he, he said, hey, don't that mean you're supposed to pray? He said, yeah, it goes off seven times a day. He said, hey guys, y'all want to stop praying with us? I said, sure. Amen. I didn't care who was around there, Brother Hines. Amen. I was ready to pray. Amen. Amen. This man was serious about serving the Lord. And that's the way we need to be. Amen. We need to be serious about God. Amen. And realize, amen, the one that we ought to want to please. Amen. The one that we should fear the most is God. Amen. Yes. It's not man. The Bible says, fret not us if because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the worker of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and weather as the green of herb. Amen? Amen. We need to realize, turn with me to Proverbs, I believe, 24. Amen. I wrote all this down so that I wouldn't hold you long tonight. Amen. But actually, it was for Sunday. Amen. But I... I thank God, amen, that, you know, God speaks to me, amen, and talks to me. Last night I woke up, amen, and God was giving me a whole other message. And I, Proverbs 24, verse 19, says, Fear not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. The cattle of the wicked shall be put out. You know what? God's made us above and not beneath. That's right. He's made us head and not tails. Amen. We don't have to brag or boast or, 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 or talk about the things that which God has blessed us with, but we're to testify about it. Amen. We're to give Him glory for it. Amen. And when we bring it up and, and talk to people, we need to let them know that we know it's because of God. 
that we have these things and God's done these things in our life and let people know that God will do them in their life. Amen? Yes. We don't have to worry about what other people think. Amen? Right. What we need to worry about the most is about the Father. Amen? And what He thinks. Amen? I can tell you tonight, amen, that God is good to me. Amen? He always has been, and I believe He always will be. No matter what, Brother Hines, whether I make a mistake or I don't, God will still love me, and He'll still be good yes, to me. Yes, He will. Because he knows that I love Him. Amen? And He knows you love Him. Amen? But the thing is, is we need to have a little more fear for the Lord than that which we've had. Amen? See, we need to be fearless of the enemy. In other words, we need to get bold. Amen? Yes. And we need to shout for the Lord. Amen? Lift up our hands and magnify God. Amen? Give Him praise and glory. Yeah. Lord. Wouldn't you hate to walk outside these doors and step out in the parking lot and all of a sudden a rock jump up and down in front of you and you had a chance to praise God and you chose not to? Amen. God could do that. Yep, He can. You know, we need to realize every time the wind blows, the trees are giving God praise. Yep. Amen? We need to realize, amen, no matter whether the wind blows or not, we ought to praise God. We ought to magnify Him. We ought to exalt Him and lift Him up and let Him know that we don't care what anybody else thinks. What matters to us is we're pleasing Him. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you tonight, amen, amen, and we'll begin to magnify God from our heart. And you begin to get into worship with God, I tell you, you won't worry about what your neighbor's thinking. Amen? All of a sudden, I've heard, I've had people tell me this. I had one of my pastors tell me this one time. Well, brother, you just kind of got beside yourself. You don't need to be doing that. I said, listen here, brother. I said, when I praise God, I don't care what anybody else thinks. If you don't like the way I praise God, you'll have to take it up with God. And he's my pastor. And I didn't say that arrogantly. I just let him know. I was going to praise God however God wanted me to, whether he liked it or anybody else liked it. And I, like I said, he was my pastor. You know what? Next, next week or two later, I seen him doing the same thing I was doing that week. Amen? You know why? Because I didn't back down. See, the enemy was in the house. He got on my pastor. Amen? I had one guy tell me, he said, well, brother, I just didn't. God told me to go get this man by the hand and have him step out in the aisle with me and dance with me. Amen? And I was kind of scared about doing it. I said, okay, God, I'm going to grab him by the hand and pull him out there. Amen. I walked over there and I grabbed him by the hand. You know what he did? He sat back there. I thought, God, what are you doing? He said, no, i got to be led by the Lord to do something like that, brother. That's what he said to me. I said, well, all right, brother, sit there. <laughs> and I just went ahead and jumped at him. Why? Because God was giving him a chance to break out of that mold. Worrying about what everybody else thought when he should have just stepped on out. And obey God. I've been there. I've been there where God told me, get up, run. I hear it just like that, run. And I stand there. I look around, nobody else running. Talk myself out of doing what God wanted me to do because I was afraid of what everybody else thought. Amen. You know what we need to do? We need to get a little radical for Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> We need to get beside ourselves, as the pastor told me. You kind of got beside yourself, brother. Yeah, I did. I let the Spirit of God have His way in my life. Amen. And I don't care, you know. There's been times I've been praying here lately. And I said, God, God, if you want me to get out and dance, God, you're going to have to help me get out there and dance. Amen. God, you just tell me to, and I'll start dancing. Amen. I'm just waiting for Him to tell me. Amen. I'd like to cut a jig, amen, but I don't want to do it in the flesh. I want to do it in the spirit. Amen? Yes, yes. And we'll just ask God. And we'll fear God in a manner that if God speaks to us, that we're more worried about what He thinks instead of what people think. Amen. We'll obey God. Amen. And we'll find ourselves doing things out of the abnormal. Amen? Yes, we How many know that God's not normal? Amen. Amen. 
How many know that His thoughts are higher than our thoughts? And His ways are greater than our yes. ways. Amen. And if God wants to reward us, amen, but He only rewards them that diligently seek Him. Amen. That's willing to obey Him no matter the cost. Amen. Yep. That's why I've always liked that story about the woman by the Coke machine. Amen. I've always enjoyed sharing that because it's such a real statement to you and I that we need to quit questioning God and we need to fear the Lord. Amen. Amen. When I say fear the Lord, I don't mean to be scared of Him, but reverence Him. Honor Him. And realize that He's the most important person in your life. And if he's not, he needs to be. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, amen, you and I need to really realize, amen, that God wants us to fear him in a way that will please him. Amen. And if we'll begin to do that, Sister Shirley, there ain't no telling what God might have you. Amen. Amen. You might find yourself walking up in, in, in Walmart, amen, and, and God shows you this person and you be standing there and, and God may tell you to go over and pray for them. You don't know them at all. Go over and lay hands on them and all of a sudden a, a healing takes place, amen, and they begin to weep and cry and tell you what God just did in their life because you obey God. Yep. God does things like that, amen? Yes. But He only does it to those that fear Him. And honor him. Amen. I'm telling you, amen. Listen to this. This is found in Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. It says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. That's all he wants us to do. Yep. If we do that, amen, you know what? We can fulfill God's will in our life. We'll just begin to walk and honor God the way He expects us to honor yep. Him. Reverence Him. Matthew 10 and 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear Him which is able to destroy both soul and, and body yes. in hell. How many know that God has the keys to heaven? He got them. Amen. He's the one in control. Amen. Yes, he is. It's not the devil. It ain't us. Amen. It ain't us. That's right. It's Hallelujah. not the devil. God's the one in control. And if we'll realize that tonight, amen, you know what we'll find ourselves doing? We'll find ourselves doing something that's not usually known. Amen. Amen. We'll find us ourselves not worrying about what our neighbor might think if we're worshiping God. You know what, Brother Hines, I used to hate. I got to a point one time in my life where I couldn't cry. I couldn't shed a tear. I wanted to cry so bad and I couldn't cry. It I've seemed been, like I tried to make myself cry and I couldn't do it. Amen. I have been there, bro. I got so hard yes. and callous in my walk yep. with God. God just shut off the tears. Why? Because I had walked away from it. Yep. You know what? I think real men can cry. Amen. That's what I think. Amen. I think a man that's so hard that can't cry, he needs Jesus. Yes, he does. Why do I think that? Because I was that way one time. Yep. I'm tender hearted and I thank God for it. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> you might say something that might prick my heart so bad tears start running down my cheeks. Amen. And I can't help it. Amen. My daddy's the same way. He used to not be like that when I was growing up. He was so hard. I mean, it, it just seemed like his whole life since then, and I'm not saying it's called me, but it seemed like once I gave my life to the Lord, my daddy changed. And, and he's not the same that he used to be, really. But, you know, I can't take the credit. I didn't do anything. I just gave my life to the Lord. But it opened, I believe it opened my daddy's eyes to the fact that God really is real. Yep. And he loves us. Now, God has always, my daddy's always been a blessed man uh, financially, physically. I mean, he, he just was a great daddy, amen. I, I mean, he spent time with us kids when we were growing up and, 
and did things with us. I mean, he, he was a good father. Took us to church. I mean, did all the right things, but it just seemed like he didn't really know Jesus until after I got saved. And maybe he was just too quiet about it, didn't he? But it came out of the box, let's just put it that way, after I got saved. The first time I ever seen my daddy lift his hands up and praise the Lord was at a promise keeper's meeting in Birmingham, Alabama, in the stadium. And I seen my daddy for the first time raise his hands up and begin to praise the Lord. 